Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to touch on another subject that comes up quite a bit, and that is how to create a recording space, how to work with what you have. And after a lot of trial and error for me, I came up with some solutions that worked for my recording space. But again, everybody's space, opportunities for space, voice, Everything is going to be different for you, so it will take a little bit of trial and error on your part, but you can make it work. If you have the imagination, the ingenuity, and the creativity and the space to work with, you can make a recording space. So that's what we'll talk about today. I am, just to remind you, I'm no expert here, but just sharing what I have learned through my own trial and error. Um, because my space is so small, it's literally a five by six storage room in my little townhouse here. And there's a lot of, uh, before I treated it, there was a lot of reflection. You know, my voice would bounce off the walls in here and cause a lot of echo and reverb. So I had to treat every single wall in here, including the ceiling. Um, it took me a long time to figure out what worked best. Uh, how much to cover, what to cover, <laughs> months, months and months of just trying different things to get the right sound. It took so long. I started with um, like the acoustic foam that you can put onto the walls. And of course, that kept falling off. And it wasn't until, you know, lots of different, <laughs> lots of different things that I tried that I realized that the best way to apply those is to um, using like um, adhesive spray and spraying them onto pieces of cardboard or poster board and then attaching the poster board to your walls. Uh, that worked for a long time, but again, I had to put it on all of the walls in this room, including the ceiling and the door. Um, but I had recently redid my studio. Um, I say recently, but I think that was almost maybe 10 months ago now. Time just flies. But when I redid it, I bought a bunch of moving blankets that you can get from um, Amazon. There's some hardware supply. You can get them used from like um, OfferUp or Macari. You can buy them used, make sure they're clean, and then just hang those on your wall. I left on all the acoustic foam that I already had on the walls and just hung the moving blankets over them for a little bit extra padding. These are pretty thick and heavy, and they reduce the reflection quite a bit. But just as an added extra layer of protection, I left on the acoustic foam and just draped the moving blankets over top just to further reduce any any reflection from any areas that I had missed. A lot of voiceover artists have a booth from, there's different, there's a lot of different uh, companies who make these. There's the Whisper Room, there's Studio Bricks, there's uh, uh, LA Vocal Booth, I believe. There's a few of them that make, or you can make your own. Um, I just don't have the room for a dedicated booth booth, like a pre-built booth in my house. So I had to convert this room into a, a studio recording space. And you can do this just about anywhere in your house if you have an extra closet somewhere. Or if you don't, there are quite a few tutorials online on taking PVC pipe and hanging moving blankets over those and creating yourself like a little portable if you wanted it to be or permanent recording space that reduces the reflections of the walls around you so you don't get that reverb. So there are a lot of different options. If you have a spare closet um, that you hang your clothes in, the clothes will actually reduce the reverb in the room and then you can add, you know, something else like moving blankets or acoustic foam to the walls around you that are untreated to reduce that reverb. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but it it all depends. There isn't a one way to do it to make your studio recording space because everyone's spaces are different. Everyone's opportunities to create 
a studio space are different. So get creative. Watch some YouTube videos on what other people have done. There are some really creative people out there that have made it work. You know, just try a few different things and see what works for your voice and your space. But you can do it with a little ingenuity and a little elbow grease and a little bit of imagination. You can create a studio space just about anywhere. I just happened to have this this closet or this little storage space that came with that was already built in my townhouse and I utilized it to make myself a recording space. But I know of a lot of people that have created, you know, PVC enclosures with moving blankets. There's a lot of different ways that you can make a recording space. You just have to use your imagination. So if you're looking for some inspiration for creating a recording space, check around YouTube. Do some Google searching. Look at some images of what other people have created. Join some Facebook groups about voiceover or with other voiceover artists in it. There's usually a lot of conversations about how to create a recording space or how they did it. There are some really creative people out there. And you can make this happen. If you truly, truly want it, you can figure it out and make it happen. Lord knows I did. But like I said, it took a lot of trial and error and, you know, just slowly slowly upgrading, you know, month after month. All the money that I made, I reinvested into this recording space. And finally, I am just about happy with it. And I say just about because there's always room for improvement in my head. <laughs> there's always something that can be upgraded or changed. But for what I have to work with, I am very happy with, with how it turned out. But it took a lot of trial and error, I'm not going to lie. And it will probably be the same with, for your situation, but you just have to, you know, take a look around and see what you can do. I even know some people, I know a person who had absolutely no room in their, in their house at all for a recording space, and he actually built a, a portable booth that he could build and deconstruct, you know, every day. Like after his kids and his wife went to bed, he would rebuild it every night, do his voiceover work, and then take it back down and, you know, send it back out into the garage. And that takes, you know, an extra 20, 30 minutes for setup and takedown. But, I mean, if you're driven and you're passionate and you really want to do this, and that is your only option, it is an option. It just depends on how bad you want to do this, I guess. So that is my story on how I created my recording space. I hope that has inspired you, helped you. If you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions for me, leave a comment down below or send me an email. Visit my website, voiceoverangela.com. I have a lot of information there. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.